Good Sunday evening, Shiloh Church family. Thank you again for joining us and being back with us by way of Facebook tonight. It is truly an honor to be able to gather back together and to spend time looking into the Word of God, as we often like to say. What a privilege we have to be able to do that. It's a joy to be able to look into the Word of God, to share thoughts from the Word of God, to preach this special word from the Lord Jesus Christ and His Holy Bible. I am truly privileged to be able to be a part of those who are called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so are you. Everyone may not do it like myself, called to be a pastor and from a pulpit to preach and teach, but we're all called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, and what a privilege that we have to do that. Would you go to the Lord with us in prayer for just a moment, please, and let's agree together. Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the time that we'll get to spend together by way of Facebook with our Shiloh Church family and other friends and guests that'll be with us, that'll view this, and I pray that these words will be an encouragement to their heart. Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We lift up all of the Shiloh Church family and for those who have the special needs in their lives, whether they be spiritual or physical or financial, we thank you that you are the one that meets our needs and we lift each one of them to you right now. For others who are watching or listening, Lord, right now that may not be a part of the Shiloh Church family, but there's many others out there that have needs as well. We ask that you would meet them according to your perfect will. And God, we lift up this nation, the United States of America. We pray for revival. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, I want to share with you for a few moments on a thought that I hope would be an admonishment and an encouragement to each of us. And a challenge, I guess, is really what I'd like to say. I hope that it will challenge us to remember something that we need to be sure that we are all doing. I'm going to share from a couple of passages for our text verses tonight. The first one is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and I want to read verse 1. And then the second one is in Acts 5 and 29. So we'll look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1, and then we're going to look at Acts 5 and 29. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 1, we find these words. It says, Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more, just as you receive from us on how you ought to walk and to please God. Please take note of that last few words there, to walk and to please God. And then we also find in Acts 5 and 29, we find these words. But Peter and the apostles, Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. I want to just remind you tonight as I remind myself that what matters most of all is that we are pleasing him first. Let me say that again. It is so important that we are found pleasing him first. Now, it is no secret that in the day that we live, we are pressured from all sides to please this one and to please that one. And we so often hear people that get caught up in, in trying to do this and to please someone. Sometimes it's pressure from a spouse or maybe a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or uh, maybe it's a, a boss man or boss woman that just seems to be just um, one of those that just d isn't reasonable in their expectations. And so often people can feel so pressured and get caught up and they've got to please this, that, this one, that one. But can I just remind you tonight that priority number one is that we be found pleasing him, pleasing God. That has got to be our first priority. We should be determined to please the most important one. And the choice that we should make in doing that should be that we determine to do exactly what the text verses that we have read to you tonight, is that we will please him and that it is important that we please God first, much more important to obey God and his directions on how to live our life 
than to try to obey the directions of men and how they think that we should live our life. One writer made the following statement. The most important thing in the Christian's life should be pleasing God. Let me say that again. The most important thing in the Christian's life should be pleasing God. They went on to say, however, there are many Christians who are not concerned about accomplishing this goal. Let me say that again. However, there are many Christians who are not concerned about accomplishing this goal. Say, now, whoa, wait a minute, preacher. Isn't that, isn't that sort of judgmental? No. It's fruit inspecting. And if a person's life, if their most critical priority in their life is pleasing God, it will show in their life and how they choose to live that life. The importance that Christ placed on doing just this is found in the writing of John chapter 8, verse 29, when he himself said, I always, for I always do those things that please him. And he's speaking of the Heavenly Father. If Jesus himself, the Son of God, when he walked upon this earth, reminded us that his priority was to always please the Heavenly Father, should ours not be the same? Priority number one should be pleasing God, pleasing him first. That's exactly what we should be determined, and that's the choice that we should be making. Well, if you want to look at and try to how to know how to differentiate the difference, let me just mention to you, first of all, uh, what does it look like when someone's not pleasing God? Let me give you some things to kind of judge by in your own life. And others, listen, people who are not pleasing God, first of all, we won't take time to read all the references, but as Romans chapter 15 would talk about, they're the people that live only for themselves. Have you ever met anyone like that? Have you ever met anyone that they don't have any time to serve anybody, but my, they are always wanting to be served? Have you ever met anyone that they just don't feel like they can afford to give to the need to help anybody, but... They're always wanting somebody to give to help the needs that they have. Have you ever met anybody that everything that came out of their mouth was just about them? Well, if you have, then you have ran into some of those who are not living to please God, but they're only living to please themselves. Galatians chapter 1 talked about those that seek to please men. And there are those that get so caught up in trying to please men that they forget to please God. And we need to remember that. Romans chapter 8 talks about those that desire just the things of the flesh. If someone is just concerned about the needs of the flesh, they're not living to please God. They're living to please themselves. And that's not living to please God if these are the characteristics of their life. And also, Hebrews would remind us that they would be those that have no faith in God. If they don't have faith in God, then certainly they're not pleasing him first. Because the Bible is very clear that we have to have faith in order to please God. And we are supposed to be having that as our first priority, to please him, our Lord and Savior above. So as far as the characteristics that you'll see of people who are not pleasing God, they'll be those that live only for themselves, that seek to please men, that desire the things of the flesh, and have no faith in God. These will be their priorities and their characteristics of their life, showing their lack of priority in wanting to please God. I hope that you're not found with those characteristics in your life I know that all of us have suffered from every one of those, perhaps to some degree at some point in time. But I hope that as you're growing and as you're maturing in Christ as a born again believer, if that's who you are. I hope that you're learning more and more every day to be less and less like the characteristics that we just looked at, because we don't want to be among those who are not pleasing God. We want to be among those who are found pleasing God. It's really a good thing to have the characteristics of someone that's not pleasing God because it sort of gives you some of those metering lines, if you want to call it that, some of those points to look at and to 
make judgments and to kind of hold up against the plumb line, as some would say in construction terms. Those are some good plumb lines to ask yourself how you line up with those. Because there is a difference between people who are not pleasing God and people who are pleasing God. Well, we talked about for just a couple of moments, those who are not pleasing God. Let's look at the other side of the coin. What about those people who are pleasing God? What about those who have decided that with his help, they want to be found pleasing him first? What will be the differences in the characteristics of their life and the ones who are found not pleasing God? Well, first of all, I think that you could say that those who are really living their life to please God, they ask right things from God. First Kings would talk about that. They ask right things from God. They are learning. We are learning to ask God the right things. How do you do that, Pastor? By studying his word, learning his word, seeing the directions of his word to ascertain his will, and then praying according to his will, asking the right things, asking in prayer the things that we know that are not in contradiction to the instructions of God, but that are in concert with the instructions of Almighty God. Those who are pleasing God and endeavoring to please Him, they're the people that are going to want to ask the right things even in their prayer time. Among Pentecostal circles all my life, I've heard that scripture quoted about, you know, whatsoever you shall ask in the name of the Lord. And, and, and I understand that that's, that is scripture. But can I tell you something? That's not scripture to be taken at face value and try to make it to be and to think that it's reality in the life of those who would not be trying to pray according to the will of God. God can answer your prayer that's prayed in direct contradiction to his will or his word. Would you please hear that? God can't answer and won't answer prayer that is in direct contradiction to his will and his word. That's why if we're really endeavoring to please him, we're going to do our best to ask the right things. What are the right things, Pastor? The things that would be in keeping, in concert with God's will and God's word. Now, maybe you've never experienced this before, but wait till you have someone that comes to you and gives you a prayer request and says, Hey, pastor, hey, preacher, I want you to pray. And then they just roll off what they want you to pray for. And you know that it's something that you can't agree with them in prayer because it's contrary to the word of God. Now, you may say, Oh, preacher, nobody would ever do that. Yes, they will. How do you know? Because they have. And I want to tell you something. Those that are seeking to please God are going to be wanting to ask the right things, and the right things are what would be in, in, in concert with the Word of God and the will of God. People who are pleasing God also will be people that are separated unto God. Second Timothy talks about that. That means that they understand that everything is not what Christians need to do. The Bible is very clear that there are some things that may not necessarily be sin, but they're not profitable for us. But there are some things that are just sin, and the Bible is very clear on that. And I want to tell you that those who are really wanting to please God, we will try to be separated unto God. And by that I mean we will ask with the help and the grace of God and the empowerment of His Holy Spirit, we will want to live those lives of righteousness and purity and holiness. Yes, the flesh, to some degree, will always want to battle against that. We understand that. But greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And God will empower us if we allow him. I absolutely believe that God will empower us through his Holy Spirit to say no to the temptations of this life and of this world that would try to get us to do things contrary to the will and the teaching of Almighty God. Let me tell you a third thing that people who are pleasing God that you'll find as a characteristic in their life. And that is that they walk with God. 
Genesis talks about that. Hebrews talks about that. They walk with God. Say, well, preacher, what do you mean they walk with God? Well, in the book of Amos, it says, can two walk together except they be agreed? So that goes right back to what I was saying about those that want to please him um, are people who are walking with him. And in order to walk with him, you have to be in agreement with him. That means that you have to surrender to God's will and God's word. It goes right back to what I was saying, that if we're going to be people that walk with God and people that are wanting to please God, one of the ways that we walk with him and what's a part of the requirement to really walk with him is we have to be determined God, not my will, but your will be done. We'll have to have those desires and want to do everything we can. Again, only with his help and empowerment. We can't do it on our own, but we we'll want to walk according to this word so that it makes it possible for us to really walk with him as he would want us to. Can I also give you one other thing about people that are really wanting to please him? there will also be people who will praise him. They will also be people who will praise him. I want to tell you that those who want to please him will be found being people who are going to praise him. The Bible is very, very clear about how God inhabits the praises of his people. And the Bible is very clear how that we should be people who will give praise unto God even when it is the sacrifice of praise. We should be found giving praise and adoration to the Lord Jesus Christ. The psalmist put it this way in Psalm 69, verses 30 and 31. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bull which has horns and hooves. What's he talking about? Better than that sacrifice that would be given that way, God is pleased with people who will praise him. You hear me talk a lot about worship and a lot about praise. Well, I, I just want to tell you that I believe that there's power in praise. You've heard me talk about that. I believe that there's an element of spiritual warfare in worship itself. But I also want you to know that just as the psalmist gives us keen insight to here, it's also pleasing to God when his people praise him. Those who are wanting to please God, they are people who will want to give him praise. I absolutely believe that. So there's some contrast and there's some characteristics. Um, looking first at people who are not pleasing God and not walking to please God. And then some of the characteristics that we should see in people who are walking to please God. Well, what about some of the promises that are made to those who please God? Did you know the Bible even gives us some powerful insight to some things that are there to those that walk to please him? Well, the Bible says, and I know this sounds, this sounds unbelievable, but the Bible says that there can even be found peace to be with their enemies. When a man's ways please the Lord, Proverbs 16 and 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's just an almost unfathomable scripture, but it is so true. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with them. I want to tell you, there are wonderful promises that are made to those who will walk to please God. And we should be found with the help and the grace and the empowerment of God's Holy Spirit, endeavoring to walk to please him. Because please hear me, I understand that neither you nor I can do it in our own strength. None of us can, but with the empowerment of of the Holy Spirit of God, we can be found walking to please Him. The Bible gives us wonderful promises to those who will walk to please Him. And the Bible is very clear about what can be ours in Christ. In 1 John chapter 3 and 22, it says that their prayers shall be answered. Listen to this. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing 
in his sight. Have you ever thought about the power in pleasing God that you can see in these promises? Well, I'm reading them to you from his word. They're not my ideas. They're his. So I want to tell you, they're promises to those who will endeavor to walk to please God with his help, with his empowerment. Yes, but we receive powerful benefits from living such a life. And then the Bible also says that to those that walk to please him, there'll be some very, very wonderful things that we can count on for a long time and for a lot of different reasons. Well, let me tell you something else that the Bible declares, and I want to read it to you. It says that for those that, are, that will please him, their name shall be everlasting. Listen to this. In Isaiah chapter 56, verse 4, For thus says the Lord, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths and those who and the, and choose what pleases me, watch that, and choose what pleases me and hold fast my covenant, even to them I will give in my house and within my walls a place and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Did you hear that? I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Now, let me let me put this uh, in, and let me just insert this here, because I don't want anybody to take out of context. I, I'm not trying to revert back to a work salvation. Please, I, I, I try to differentiate that so much, not to be redundant, because I want it understood. I'm not talking about walking to please him to earn your way into heaven. You can't do that, and I can't either. I'm talking about, you've heard me say it before, how liberating it was for me when I realized, and, and I can tie it into this thought, I shouldn't walk to please God to get to heaven. I should want to walk to please God because I'm on my way to heaven. There's such a difference there. And so I want to remind you that we need to, priority number one is that we should first be pleasing him. And I challenge you to remember that. The Apostle Paul challenges us to even present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Remember these words? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. All that I am, all that I can ever be, I should want to dedicate it, sacrifice it to him, and to say, Lord, First priority, I want my life to be pleasing to you. We all have these ongoing struggles that I mentioned earlier. The flesh, to some degree, as long as we are living in this fallen world, there's always going to be, to some degree, that warring of the flesh against the spirit man. One of the apostles wrote it well. The things that I want to do, I don't do. The things that I don't want to do, I do. What's he talking about? He's talking about the struggle between flesh and spirit and how that he didn't get it right all the time either. But can I tell you something? Our priority, our desire should be, God, let me be pleasing to you first and foremost. Before I please myself, before I try to please others, by your grace, God, help me to be found pleasing you first. One of the challenges over the years in church has been a loss of proper prioritization. I, I really believe that. And I just want to tell you something. Proper priority is not sports first, pleasures first, recreation first, money first, Priority number one is please God first. When we do that, I believe God will help us to get the other priorities in line. I, I don't struggle with this part of believing in my heart that for me that's blessed, that, that I'm married, um, that I'm blessed with wonderful children and grandchildren, this is, this is the priorities for Pastor Daniel. God first my wife next, my family next. Yes, there's other important priorities. But priority number one 
should be pleasing him first, not others. I challenge you to remember that. When you endeavor with the help and the empowerment of Almighty God to make your first priority to please him first, it won't wipe away all your other problems. It won't keep you from disappointments and heartaches. But I can tell you this, and I say this from experience, not a hypothesis. When you endeavor with his help to please him first, all the other things will more quickly and more properly be able to fall into place. It's about pleasing him, priority number one. I challenge you. I challenge me. Let's remember that every day that we get up, may it be our desire. God, may I this day walk, talk, and live in such a way that I bring pleasure to you, my Heavenly Father. God bless you. I love you. We look forward to being back together next time. Please remember, back again on Wednesday night by Facebook. God willing, we'll see you then. I love you.